Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor V. Is the field of NP saturated? Okay, but before we get started, make sure you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. All right, so initially I got my master's degree in nursing education, and then so my practicum was my last semester. My second to last semester, I followed a nurse practitioner. And I was like, hmm, this is kind of interesting. Maybe I'd like to do this, right? And then um, the pay scale for nurse educators is just like nurse educators deserve to get paid so much more money for what they do. I will say that again, nurse educators need to get paid more money. I don't know why the pay discrepancy is so awful. So that being said, when I told a few of my colleagues that I was going back to school for nurse practitioner, the number one thing I would hear is like, oh, why are you doing that? It's so saturated. And normally I like to present statistics and studies and blah, 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 right? I like to hit you with the facts. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about my experience, right? Um, I think life is what you make of it. And is the field saturated? I, th I think like yes and no, right? If you're just starting out, getting that first job, that is the hard part. You don't have experience, nobody wants to give you a job because they're not, they're, they don't want to be the ones to give you experience, right? That being said, are you a go-getter or are you just going to, are you going to send out 10 applications and then give up when those 10 deny you? So if you are the kind of person that you are persistent, Starting a new job in any field without experience is hard. My sister has a doctor degree in industrial psychology. Do you think her getting her first job was easy? No, getting her first job was tough. It took a lot of persistence. So same thing for nurse practitioners. When you first graduate, you don't have that experience. So you have to prove yourself to people. But once you have experience, the doors are wide open. I see every day on Indeed, glass door that there are tons and tons of nurse practitioner jobs everywhere and the pay rate does vary depending on what state right new york california is going to pay better than florida i live in florida right we are one of the worst paying states for nurse practitioner pay and i made a video about how much um, do nurse practitioners make you can check it out at the top here me when i was a bedside nurse i did not make anywhere near what i am making now as a nurse practitioner and i know that this is accurate too because my boyfriend is currently a nurse and he works overnight and even with his differential i am still making about twice what he's making so yes you will make more money as a nurse practitioner but that's not what this video is about i digress let's let's go back okay so what is this video about this video is about is being a nurse practitioner saturated at the end of the day, I think it also depends too on what kind of person you are. Are you a go-getter? Are you going to be sending out cover letters with all of your job applications? Are you sending out recommendation letters with all of your job applications? You have to set yourself apart. Okay, so what do I think helped me get a job? Well, first of all, I got a lot of rejection. A lot of people did not want to give me a job because of my lack of experience. I was ready to go volunteer at a free clinic in order to get my experience and it's called good shepherd in florida so if you live in florida and you need some experience volunteer for good shepherd you will get that experience and not only that you're going to be around physician specialists right a lot of my friends and actually that's how i got my second job offer so where you do your practicum and i cannot recommend this enough please go to a school that places you for practicum because finding practicum sites if your school doesn't place you is a headache. It's a headache. I know people that have not been able to graduate for the past two years because they can't get their clinical hours in because their site, their school doesn't place them. So anyways, my school did place me and I was able to, to request where I wanted to be placed. They did place me there for practicum. When I graduated, they didn't have an immediate opening. So I started applying for jobs in October. I did get a position and I started working there. And then in January, the, the place where I did my practicum, they did offer me a position and now I've been there since January. I did get a first job. I really wanted a second job. I left the first job and now I've been at my current job. Now I've been at my second job for the past four months. I don't know what the future holds for me. I actually do love teaching and um, I'm, I actually do love teaching so I may go back to that. I don't know. I don't know what the future holds for me. I don't know if I'm going to be in NP school. But if you love being an NP, don't let other people rain on your parade. 
do you boo boo because at the end of the day you are responsible for your own life i have never allowed the naysayers to say what i want to do right do you know how many people told me i was crazy for starting a youtube channel that oh youtube is saturated down to it right here i am a year and four months later i am monetized am i making lots of money no i'm not but i'm going to grow right i'm going to keep growing so do not listen to the naysayers if you really want to be a nurse practitioner then do it go for it don't worry about if it's if it's saturated worry about getting into school right one step at a time there's an ancient chinese proverb that it's like a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step right a lot of times it's attributed that quote is attributed to lao tzu but th they say that they don't really know who said it but that's besides the point okay oh, do you guys see how my brain works i have add all over the place okay so that being said, if you really want to be a nurse practitioner, if you're tired of being a bedside nurse, if you're tired of um, breaking your back every shift and not making enough money, if you love being bedside, then then keep doing it. We need you. God bless you. Stay in it if you love it because God knows we need bedside nurses. But if you're tired, if you work on a unit where they have just broken you, administration is always down your neck, always criticizing everything you're doing, but not seeing the good that you're doing, or if you work in a hospital where physicians are, you know, you get it from administration, you get it from hospital, you get it from the, the doctors, and you're getting it from patients. If you're overworked, you have too many patients, you don't have enough techs, you don't have phlebotomists, you know, it, it's, it astounds me the amount of work that nurses have now been placed. Nurses now have no techs, nurses now have no phlebotomists, and we're expected to do lab draws, we're expected to completely clean the patient, which I don't care if I have to clean a patient, I don't care if I have to wipe a butt, but the problem is, why am I having to wipe a butt when I have five other patients, right? They're giving us way too many patients for the amount of work we have to do, and on top of that, again, we went to school and our skill set should be utilized to the max. So. Our expertise is medication administration, um, making sure our patients stay alive, recognizing clinical deterioration of patients. And when we're so busy focused on wiping bed 202's butt and cleaning this bedpan and getting graham crackers for room 2303, right? We don't have time. A lot of times big things get missed because we're being so overworked. Um, when I was a bedside nurse, they were just doing away with phlebotomists on our unit. We used to have phlebotomists that would do all our lab draws and slowly, slowly they were like, oh, just kidding, you're gonna have to do lab draws now. Oh, just kidding, environmental services will not be taking your trash out anymore. You now have to take your trash out. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. If I Maybe if I had one patient, sure, I'll make their bed, I'll take out the trash, I will get their graham crackers, I will change them every time that they soil themselves because, God forbid, they're on some kind of laxative K-axalate or something and they're having bowel movements every hour or every 30 minutes. Like, the people, you know, getting vital signs, it is a lot of work. So if you're at the point where you're miserable as a bedside nurse because of all those reasons, I understand you. I've been there it's okay and you feel like you want to move on you want to expand your expertise you want to expand your scope of practice then go for it again if you're happy as a nurse i'm not criticizing nursing i'm not saying you know i don't think every person should be a nurse practitioner but if it is your dream to be a nurse practitioner or you want to move on then do it don't listen to the naysayers and make the best out of every situation i think it was it was either henry ford or abraham lincoln i can't remember that was like whether you think you can or you can't, you are right, right? And that's essentially what life boils down to. If you think you can get a job when you're done with NP school, you're going to get a job, even if it takes you persisting. And that is the thing. I will forever be grateful that I, my parents are immigrants because the things that immigrants have had to go through in order to make it in this country is just astounding. I will leave you with two stories. My mom has a friend that initially came from Mexico. So my family, our background is Colombian, right? So this, my mom's friend came from Mexico and he's married to um, one of our Colombian friends. But anyways, he came from Mexico when he was here and he started working in construction and he had no money. He had no money. He would save about $50 a week for himself send everything back to his mother in Mexico to support her because you know they don't she didn't have enough money 
and he had no place to stay. So what he would do is he would sleep at the construction site on concrete floor, like sleep as a homeless person. And all he would eat, all he could afford to eat every week was bread and mayonnaise. That's what he ate. And then he was able to get a green card because they were offering agricultural visas at the time. And he applied for one and he was able to get a visa that way. But can you imagine having to sleep on a concrete floor, eating bread and mayo, the struggle? And now he's doing so well. Now he's a, a citizen of the United States and he owns his own construction company and he's so well off. Or my mother, when she came to the United States, she also couldn't afford pretty much anything. So she had a tiny little studio apartment. She couldn't turn on the furnace. And, and the thing is, if you're Hispanic, you know how Hispanic parents guilt trip you. They're like, when I was your age, I didn't have this and this and this. So being from immigrant parents, it's so we stay humble. We stay humble because we know from where our parents came from and we know how much they had to struggle. So we appreciate everything that we've been given. So my mother comes from Colombia, tiny studio apartment, can't afford to turn on the furnace because he, paying for heat is too expensive. So she tells me like she would literally be freezing in the winters, just wearing all these layers. And this was in Rhode Island, this was not in Florida. So she first came to Rhode Island and she would be there in the studio apartment, just freezing, freezing to death without being able to turn on the furnace because she couldn't afford utilities. Um, and all she could afford to eat was rice. Rice was the only thing. And she would say, I would eat arroz pelado, which just means like rice and that's it, right? No, she couldn't afford meat. She couldn't afford anything. She just ate rice. She worked two, she had two full-time jobs. So for a year, she's working two full-time jobs, barely even being able to afford anything in order to be able to save up money. Um, and eventually my dad also came over and then they started building a life together. And now I'm so proud of them. The things that they've been able to accomplish, the, they've been able to buy a property that's beautiful. They have, uh, they have three acres of land and they're just so well off. And again, to come from nothing, to to where what they have now what they have saved and the jobs that they have had it's amazing it's astounding um not once minorities get a bad rep so the story about the mexican that i told you about nor the one about my parents neither one of them have ever applied for government assistance they never applied for government assistance and i'm not saying that having the government help you is a bad thing. I'm not saying that at all. There's no shame in it. But, you know, as minorities, it's always like, oh, uh, they're living off the government, right? No, no, they're not. They literally did pull themselves up by the bootstraps. So you can afford to send multiple job applications out in the comfort of your own home. And you can afford to write, get a recommendation letter, write yourself a cover letter, and send out. If it takes 200 applications for you to send out, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just need one job offer. So when you graduate, just bite the bullet and send them all out. And you'll be amazed at the doors that open for you once you gain experience. Don't listen to the naysayers. And even Zig Ziglar used to say this in his motivational speeches. He used to say, you have to have the immigrant mindset. And the immigrant mindset is, I came to this country for new opportunities and I am going to do whatever it takes to make it in this country and to be able to succeed. So you have an opportunity that if you can go to school and you can afford to go to school, do it and you will get a job, okay? Yes, there are people out there that have been applying and have not been able to get a job, but there has to be there has to be a reason, there has to be something. Are people that are saying they're not getting a job, or how many how many job applications are you sending out a week, right? Is their resume is their resume or CV what does it look like? Is it neat? Is it uh, free of grammatical errors? Um, are they sending out cover letters? Are they sending out recommendation letters? You have to set yourself apart. If if 70% of people don't bother to get a recommendation letter, you best believe I'm gonna send out a recommendation letter, right? 
So set yourself apart from the pack. Do more, go above and beyond, and you will get that job. I'm an introvert. I don't like to network, but networking is huge. It's important. Go to、um, even if you don't have a job yet. Go to dinners, like、um, go to continuing education、uh, seminars and workshops. Once this whole COVID thing is over, if people like you and you network, it's so much easier also to get a job. If someone. Helps you get in through that door. That's just the way it is. It is about who you know. My first psych job is because the guy I went to nursing school with. I reached out to him and I was like, I can't remember if I reached out to him or if he reached out to me, and was like, Hey, are you interested in psych? Or if I asked him, like, Hey, I'm interested in a position at your hospital. But either way, I know it's because I knew this person that I was able to get a job at a psych facility. And then getting that experience in psych opened so many doors for me、uh, as a nurse educator because I was not aware that there is such a limited experience of psych、uh, nursing instructors, right? So because I worked in psych, I'm able to teach in psych. I'm able to do clini-、um, psych clinicals, which for me, psych is the best kept secret if you're a clinical instructor because、um, you focus on. Teaching teaching nursing students all about the fluffy lovey dovey stuff about being compassionate to your patients, therapeutic communication, and just talking to patients, right? Whereas when you do medical clinicals, like those are a lot more strenuous. Like, okay, we got to do vitals. What blood? What medication are you giving? What is it for? What are side effects? And we're not doing any of that in psych. I kind of rambled on about many many things, all to say. All to say that I don't think that being a nurse practitioner that the field is saturated. There's still plenty of opportunities for people.、Um, there's a shortage of physicians, and now with this COVID thing, there's so many opportunities for telehealth. So I don't think NP is saturated. And you know, I said I wasn't going to give you a statistic, but I am going to give you a statistic. So I said I wasn't going to hit you with the statistics, but I couldn't help myself because I'm such a nerd. Okay. So this is the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. They gather data and they provide job outlooks, and they are a pretty reliable source. The job outlook for nurse practitioners is 26%. It's much faster than average. The、um, number of jobs in 2018 was 240,700. Typical entry level education is still a master's degree. It's not yet a doctorate. I feel like that will be changing in the future, though. And the median pay. Now, keep in mind again, this takes the entire United States because I am making about ten dollars less than、uh, per hour than this average. But the 2019 median pay was fifty-five dollars an hour. And again, once you get experience, you can negotiate a higher salary. So、um, now, you know what is very interesting and surprisingly. When you actually look at the job outlook of nursing, it's only the job is only at twelve percent. So the job outlook for a nurse practitioner is actually much higher than a registered nurse. And anytime anyone says, "Oh, I'm going to school to be a registered nurse," everyone's like, "Oh yeah, good for you, do it." So again, the job outlook for an NP is pretty high. And if you're willing to travel and move. Your odds are even better if you are willing to move to a place where there's a high need, or where they they pay more. You're going to be good. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for dealing with my roundabout way to get to the point.、Yeah. Before we end, make sure that you hit the like button. Make sure that you subscribe. And if you want to get annoyed every time I post a video, then make sure you hit that notification bell. All right. Thanks for watching. Make sure before I can't talk. I can't talk today. Make sure the、uh, make sure <laughs> how、uh, in one of the Facebook YouTube group and one of the Facebook you.